Joe Rogan and Andrew Huberman explored the link between aggression, mating, and the brain setter mechanisms. Are your instincts shape behavior in animals and humans? Is it common in the animal kingdom because in order to have strong genes that pass on, you need a strong animal, and so they express themselves in this aggressive way to prove to the female that they're strong enough to mate and procreate? Like, what is the reason for that sort of aggressive? Is there a reason? Well, it's a, it's a great question. There's this theory called hydraulic pressure theory. This was developed by Conrad Lorenz, which is another Nobel Prize winner who studied animal behavior. Here's the idea is that all of these different populations of neurons are in the hypothalamus. This is a little tiny, tiny thing. I mean, it's the size of like a a little gobstopper candy, like a little gumball. Mm -hmm. And you've got neurons for aggression, neurons for mating, neurons that turn on to make sure that you that animals don't try and mate with the wrong species, right? We take this for granted. Like, well, how mm -hmm. come a cat doesn't try and mate with the dog? The dog might hump, but that's a different thing altogether. So it's all harbored in there. And th this hydraulic theory is that all of these things are kind of weighted probabilities. So there's never zero probability that any of this will happen unless they're in sleep. But maybe it's 10% aggression, 80% mating while they're mating. Maybe another male enters the arena and now there's sort of like confusion, like like, am I going to have to fight or can I keep mating? These kinds of things, because mm -hmm. oftentimes these animals are communal in some way. And so the way that Anderson explained this to me, and we had a conversation about this recently, is that the brain might actually get confused in certain moments. That, you know, and there's also a kind of opioid pain relief thing that gets released during sexual activity. Pain threshold goes way up, right? And we were talking about this in the context of fetishes because... You know, you look at fetishes, they're not random. True fetishes are can be pathologies where people actually require the presence of something in order to become aroused. And those things almost always, if you look at true fetishes, are things like feet, feces, animals, things that are all very infec infectious. Exactly. Your facial expression illustrates it perfectly. My facial expression for those listening is yuck. Exactly. So, you know, <laughs> that's disgust. And you have circuits in your brain that are for disgust that are about getting you away from that thing because it's infectious, future, disgusting, and out of context. And then you think about sex and food appetite and all that, and it's, it's all petitive, as they call it. It's moving towards it. It's bringing in more of those molecules as opposed to trying to get away from, like, vomit or something. Right, but the feet thing, isn't it like guys like pretty feet? It, you know, we're very visual animals, and so it may cross over into visual perception, and what arouses people differs, obviously. People have their different proclivities. But true fetishes are a kind of a confusion of this circuitry, right, where people confuse or learn arousal associated with something that's actually quite dangerous. I mean, you take the extreme one, like body. It's like incredibly... Is that normal? No, I mean, no, no. This oh, is... Excuse me, not normal. Common. Uh, like the body one? Not common. Not common. Common but, enough that you brought it up, though. <laughs> well, I've been reading up on this because I'm, I'm fascinated by the primitive as a, in addition to the more evolved parts of the mm -hmm. brain. So the way Anderson describes it is, you know, you'll see animals mating and then all of a sudden, you know, he'll bite the back of her neck or sometimes she'll bite him. The theory is that some of the neurons, and they've seen this in brain imaging in real time because they can do that in animals, some of the neurons that are responsible for aggression will just suddenly, you know, spike up there, right? right. And, and will kind of overtake the other behavior and then they'll go back to mating. Now, when you're talking about studies on animals and they're doing this, it's kind of, there's these ethical questions if you're going to do a study on humans, if you wanted to stimulate those same neurons and try to incite aggression or hostility or even arousal. But has anybody done it? They have. They have. They have. So a good friend of mine, Eddie Chang, he's the chair of neurosurgery at UCSF. He spends his life and he makes his living probing around in the brain of people who have epilepsy, looking for the site where if they stimulate, the person will have a seizure so they can burn that area out or make some other manipulation. And he's told me that he's been poking, you can't poke around at random, right? You can't, you know, Every scientist would love to just do that experiment, just go in and kind of search. But there are sites where they'll stimulate, thinking they might evoke a feeling of pleasantness or no feeling at all, and the person will go into a rage in the in the OR, in the operating really? room, because they're wide awake. You know, you've probably seen these things of people with neurosurgery and they're playing the violin mm -hmm. or things of yeah. that sort. Occasionally, they'll hit an area where the person will say, I'm feeling super angry right now. And they'll say, let's back off a little bit from there. And they'll chart where they were in the brain. That is wild. So there's just like a spot. Yeah, there is. What do you think? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe for more to come.